The Oklahoma City streetcar system will soon celebrate a milestone. And while the pandemic has hurt business development downtown, city leaders say better days are ahead for mass transit in our state. ONR Steve Shaw has our report. Oklahoma City's modern day streetcar story began 11 years ago when city voters approved a one cent sales tax. $135 million of the money generated went towards a five mile streetcar system that officially became operational in December 2018. To ride on a streetcar, you must wear a mask. Fares range from a dollar a ride to three dollars a day. If you want to ride unlimited every day, it costs thirty-two dollars a month. There are twenty-two streetcar stops from Midtown to Downtown, through Automobile Alley, the Business District, the Arch District, Myriad Gardens, Scissor Tail Park, Chesapeake Energy Arena, and of course, Bricktown. A key piece here is more than 13,000 people now live either downtown or close to it. Yet streetcars were not brought here to serve just those people who live here. The streetcar is one of those drivers of economic development. Um, we know that because when we look at the amount of public and private investment that have went uh, around the streetcar route, We've actually had about $1.6 billion of investment within three blocks of the routes. What will very soon be known as the mother load of Oklahoma City streetcar stops is at Oklahoma City Boulevard in South Robinson. Chesapeake Energy Arena, the new Omni Hotel, Scissor Tail Park, and the city's gargantuan new convention center are just steps away from the stop. Walk across the street, get on the streetcar, and then that streetcar will provide connection downtown. In fact, people don't know this, but the, the streetcar uh, through its five mile, roughly five mile route, will connect an individual to about 30% of what downtown has to offer. Convention Center General Manager Al Rojas says their brand new 500,000 square foot facility will officially be open by February, and they've already got 10 conventions booked through the year 2024. And when it does open, he says, it will be debt free because of smart planning all those years ago. Right now, we're, we're in the driver's seat. We're in the driver's seat. What is happening right here downtown and for the, the city is that it's putting up on the city where it needs to be on the map. It opens up so much access for people to be able to park once downtown, hop on the streetcar, can go all over and visit all sorts of great spots, downtown, midtown, automobile alley. Speaking of automobile alley, Roger Cude opened Water's Edge Winery at 9th and Broadway in 2013. The double whammy of streetcar construction and then COVID-19 left Water's Edge and some other nearby retail spots on life support or worse. I don't know. Um, you know, business has come back a little bit. Has it come back enough to make up for what we lost? Has it come back enough to sustain us into the future? Tough call. I mean, we've got to give credit to our business owners. Um, they worked with us alongside this project every step of the way. I mean, you know, when transit projects go in, um, it's difficult, right? City Councilwoman Jo Beth Hammond represents part of downtown Oklahoma City. You know, the fact that the city did commit to a streetcar kind of before a lot of other cities were, even not really maybe knowing totally what um, what that looked like um, is is a really, I think, an opportunity to show people how well transit can work and then try to get those folks to also embrace our bus system. Speaking of buses, Tulsa is in the planning stages of a second rapid transit bus line that will connect downtown to the Eastgate Metroplex. Tulsa Transit Director Ted Reek says there's been talk about connecting downtown Tulsa to downtown Oklahoma City by rail for years, but that's probably a billion dollar proposition. I understand about a thousand people uh, go between the two cities on a daily basis. Uh, I'm not sure if that's enough to sustain a rail system. Reek says the public will determine if streetcars ever come here. So I think the value of a streetcar, even in Tulsa, would be to connect uh, what I would call the pearls of Tulsa, you know, downtown, Cherry Street, Brookside, 
um, and then uh, maybe help focus development in those areas um, in a way that uh, other improvements wouldn't do. But that's a big leap of faith for people, and I don't know if they're ready to look at transit that way. Steve Shaw, the Oklahoma News Report. Steve, thank you. Tulsa launched its first 15-mile rapid transit bus line last year. The city says their ridership averages about 1,000 people per day.